What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. The Atlantic hurricane uh, season is about to get a lot more active, folks. We now have not one, not two, but breaking news, three areas of interest. We have one that is near the Bahamas, another one that just entered the Caribbean Sea, and this whole area of interest right here, this brand new one by the Cabo Verde Islands, is expected to uh, to potentially develop in the next seven days or so. It's this tropical wave right here that I've been focusing on, David Schlauhauer has been focusing on, and a bunch of other people in the community have been focusing on for the last several days or so. So we're going to have to continue to monitor this as it's going to be moving through pretty decent conditions for development as it gets up to here. But before we get into that, we're going to go ahead and show you what all these mean. We'll go ahead and read this new one first. A tropical wave is located south of the Cabo Verde Islands. Some development of the system is possible later this week into the weekend while it moves westward to west-northwestward over the tropical Atlantic. 20% chance of development. This one that is near the Bahamas did get downgraded a little bit. It was at a 20% chance of development yesterday. Now it's down to a 10%. A weak low trough of slow pressure is located a few hundred miles south southwest of Bermuda. Significant development appears unlikely. Formation chance uh, seven, uh, in the next seven days, 10%. 10% in the next seven days and 48 hours for Invest 95L it is, as it's starting to be moving through some more unfavorable conditions over there. We're going to continue to monitor it as this still poses a significant flooding threat across much of the land, the Antilles right here. However, the main show is going to be this system right here that could impact and cause a significant amount of flooding at, at the very least to Georgia, South Carolina, maybe even North Carolina, and this area of interest right here that I've been monitoring over the last several days. So we're going to go ahead and first talk about something. I wanted to show you what the GFS latest run was. And I want to pay attention mainly to this area of interest out here in the eastern Atlantic right here, as it is expected to organize and develop. And according to the latest GFS run, as well as several other runs that have been very consistent with this, this is anticipated to strengthen into a hurricane, potentially a major hurricane, as it has a possibility to affect land, especially as it gets closer. And then the Bermuda High starts to push it out a little bit more to the east, and it could at the very least, cause some some uh, a little bit of surge, some rip currents, but at the very most, it could uh, see, signify, at least in the outer banks, a potential hit right there. So we'll have to monitor it as time continues to go on right here. But this this, this does continue to move out into the subtropics, starts to disorganize and become extra tropical as time goes on. But that's what the latest GFS has right here. And I'm taking this completely with a grain of salt. Number one, that by the time it even gets to up to a hurricane up to hurricane strength it gets it's basically already 6 to 7 days out so is it impossible no but anything after 5 days for the GSFS becomes a bit unreliable and by the time it approaches the US it's about 10 days out so I'm not too inclined to trust it for now. It's definitely something to keep an eye on. I'm not saying it isn't, but you have to pay attention to it. You have to keep in mind this is a lot of days out, and we can't forecast that accurately that far out. So we'll go ahead and next show you the global sea temperatures right here to see what these systems are working with. 95L is through this... Uh, 28 plus degrees Celsius range in the Caribbean. Uh, This new area of interest, very warm waters, decent OHC, and we'll get to that in just a second. And then in the eastern Atlantic, 28 plus 29 degrees Celsius waters right there. It's right now in some unfavorable conditions, and we'll get to those in a second. But yeah, that's what this has to work with. And breaking news out of Florida, we now have an unconfirmed report of a sea surface temperature of 101.1 degrees, which, if verified, would be the warmest temperature on record, not just in the United States, but in the world. The previous record was around 99.6 in Kuwait Bay. That should tell you the gravity of all this. We also had another one hit over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which either way, it's going to be quite the situation. Now, as we go ahead and go into the OHC, OHC is especially in the Caribbean, especially in near the Bahamas, is absolutely insane right here. This two blobs off the coast of Cuba right here, that's over 175 plus OHC right there. 
If anything can get into that with low shear and decent moisture, it can absolutely explode. And that's going to be an indicator for what happens in the next couple of months or so. So definitely something to monitor on that front, especially compared to 2020, where we weren't that expansive for OHC wise across this part of the Atlantic. So I want everyone to, I want to stress that to everyone because this is like, if it wasn't for the shear or the El Nino, um, it would be pretty a uh, pretty interesting season to say at the very least. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the deep layer shear er, models right here, the deep layer shear, where this area of interest is right here that's near the Bahamas. Pretty good shear for now. It is starting to show some more storm activity, but as it approaches the Carolinas, the shear is going to start tearing into it a bit more. But we'll have to look at the models to see how long that's going to hold. And that area of interest that's near the Cabo Verde Islands, we'll go ahead and show you that basin over here. Okay, that's not going to let us do that. Um, okay, never mind. We'll move on uh, Move on then. And we'll go ahead and show you the European um, forecast right here, the European shear forecast, as well as the moist air forecast. And we'll go ahead and see what we have coming up right here. The shear in the, in the main development region is going to continue to fluctuate back and forth. And along those lines, the Caribbean shear is going to fluctuate pretty much late July and early August. The shear typically starts fluctuating across the Atlantic Ocean. So this is something you would expect pretty much around this time. And this is something that wasn't happening in 2022. But by around July 31st, the shear across a massive swath of the Atlantic calms down at least for the first day or so. And although the shear does start to pick up in some areas, it kind of remains like that for the next several days, especially in this part of the Atlantic, parts of the MDR, parts of the Caribbean, although this starts to pick up back again, it starts to get stronger again, but that's going to basically not last long as time continues to go on. But that's an interesting situation we have going on right here because the shear pretty much collapses the last week of July and the first week of August. So anything that develops and can move through this moist air we have right here, which the Sahara dust is still going to limit some development over the next few days or so. But by August 3rd, as we can see right here, this there is still some more dust across the Atlantic, which could definitely hinder some development for now. But we have warm, warmer than ever water temperatures. We have very good shear across much of the Atlantic if we can, if that dry air gets out of there, that shield's gone, and it's going to start popping out storm after storm after storm after storm once that Sahara dust lets up. And that Sahara dust usually lets up in the first couple of weeks of August or so. So that's the situation we have going on right here. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the European Ensemble forecast to see what really this business is up to. 95L, the European's still not giving up on it, but I'm kind of giving up on it. It's not showing really any more signs of organization. But this area of interest, which is, was tagged by the NHC, has piqued my interest quite a lot. As the European is calling for at least a few of these rounds to become hurricanes right here. Although the most of them do stay out to sea, thankfully. Although a couple of them do potentially have it hitting Florida into Georgia and those states right there. So definitely something to monitor as time continues to go on. We'll go ahead and quickly show you the GFS Ensemble. And the GFS Ensemble, I will warn you, is quite a bit more aggressive, which is why the official GFS forecast was so adamant of a like 960 mine uh, uh, sub 960 millibar hurricane approaching the US right here I'm not too inclined to trust it right here. This is the 0Z we have right here, which basically has all those ensembles. If we look at the 12Z for some more comparison to the official forecast, that's why they're doing it right here. We're looking at several runs of these potentially impacting the outer banks with the outer bands with this. So definitely something to continue monitoring as time continues to go on. We'll continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. The hurricane season is just getting started, so we'll continue to cover it right here and right there. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. If you want to come hang out with us at Storms United and see some behind the scenes on what we're thinking about a lot of this hurricane season, come join the Discord server. Link is right over there. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.